Born in 1421, Sir Ralph de Ashton is one of history's forgotten douche canoes. Known as the Black Knight of Ashton, he spent his entire life at the centre of royal power. First as page to Henry VI in the House of Lancaster, and then as a loyalist House of York, Yorkist supporter. Eventually becoming the worm tongue to the Saruman of the moustache twirling daddy o of British history, Richard III. Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this worm tongue of Tame side. I think we have been betrayed. Quick! To the tower! Clarence, get me a horse! This is Past Force. Sir Ralph, as he became, was born into a noble family in what is now Tameside, Greater Manchester, Ashton under Lyme. His father, Sir John, was quite a heroic knight, quite a bold, courageous knight in France during the Hundred Years' War. His mother, Margaret, was a member of the Byron family, the same family that would later produce the Lord Byron. You know, the one who was mad, bad and dangerous to know. But then again, as we shall find out, so was Ralph. And his brother, Thomas. His brother was, well, half-brother, I should say, was alchemist to Henry VI. The entire family were a bunch of loons. You're related to them, aren't you, James? As I mentioned in the introduction, Ralph was first, at the age of 13, the page to King Henry VI. But later on he joined the Yorkist cause, becoming a supporter of Edward IV. And Edward IV made him Sheriff of Yorkshire for his, for his support. And he fought in the invasion of Scotland in 1482 helping to capture Berwick-upon-Tweed. And for this, he was rewarded for his courage, whatever his courage was, by none other than the man who was then Duke of Gloucester, Richard III. Clarence! Clarence, where's my horse? If you can't get me a horse, bend over! He was also in the entourage of Richard when he was crowned a year later in 1483. I have read as well that he might have carried the crown, but I can't for the life of me find where I read this. So, whether it's true or not, I don't know. So far, this is all bog-standard, medieval, Wars of the Roses noble fair. But there was a good reason he was known as the Black Knight, and it wasn't because his armour was as black as pitch. It's because he was allegedly a complete and total fucking bastard. Allegedly he hated marigold flowers. No, no, not hated. Hated is too too weak a word. Despised? Abhorred? Psychotically detested? Let's just say he had a thing about marigold flowers. So much so that if he found any on his lands, on any of his tenants' lands, the tenant responsible would be stuck in a barrel full of spikes and rolled down a hill. And sometimes, Ralph, Sir Ralph, would just sometimes just stick his tenants in a barrel full of spikes and roll them down a hill for fun. 
apparently he liked torturing and murdering his tenants for fun. For shits and giggles. For the jolly sake of it. In 1484, two of his younger sons allegedly beat up two royal servants. So clearly the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And then there's the marriage of his second son to Margaret Lever. Margaret Lever was Sir Ralph's ward and she had a very big inheritance. So Sir Ralph decided he was going to marry her off to his second son, Ralph, and claim all her lands for his own family. One problem, Margaret's uncle, Roger, didn't like this much, so he contested the marriage. It got brought to court. He lost. He and his friends tried to steal the case notes. So, what does Sir Ralph do? He has Roger kidnapped and murdered. But all of this is nothing. All of this movie villain, medieval tyrant stuff. Oh no, this is nothing. Because it's entirely possible that he is responsible for one of the greatest mysteries in British history. Because in 1483, he becomes Lieutenant of the Tower of London. The Tower. The Tower. Tell the Tower. Yep, yep, Clarence. Yep, 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 yep. 1483, that's, that's, that's a familiar day, isn't it? What happened in 1483? Fourteen eighty three, Edward the Fourth dies. His ten, eleven, twelve year old son Edward becomes king. He ends up in the Tower of London and goes mad. Oh no, James, please no. He's not responsible for the princes in the Tower, is he? Well, he might be because he was made lieutenant of the Tower of London. In 1483, around the time that the princes went missing. And guess who was responsible for the princes and their well-being in the tower? Yep, that's right, it's the lieutenant. Who was Sir Ralph? So basically, they went missing on his watch. And this is a guy who hates marigolds and tortures people for fun. Suspicious much? I mean, this might give an explanation for why they were murdered. Look, Sir Ralph, I brought you flowers. They're marigolds. 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 For that young Skywalker. You will die! The Richard the Third Society are really going to hate me for this one, aren't they? Because they believe that no, 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 no! Richard the Third didn't have the princess in the town murdered! No, no, he didn't! He didn't! He didn't! Well, all the evidence says that they went missing in 1483, so... Yeah, who do you believe? But a bit of a word about the Richard the Third Society, they're a bit... Well, they're like the historical equivalent of Donald Trump supporters. In that they doggedly refuse to change their views. They doggedly refuse to listen to any opposing arguments. They're kind of stuck in this one mindset that Richard III was completely innocent. He didn't have a hunch. He was nothing like Shakespeare's play. He didn't murder the princes in the tower. 
single-minded, like Trump supporters. Hmm. Donald Trump as Richard III. Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by making America great again. So Ralph was insanely loyal to Richard III. So much so that when the Duke of Buckingham, another of the suspects in the murder of the princes, rebelled in October of 1483, Ralph was made Vice Constable of England, one of the most powerful positions in the land. And to get an appointment like that, he must have been insanely close to the king, insanely loyal to the king. They must have been practically like that. There's no proof that he was at Bosworth. We don't know whether he was or he wasn't. If he was, he survived. But there's like no record of Henry VII going after him. But his death, which happened presumably 1486, a year after Bosworth. This was celebrated in Ashton under Lyme for years and years afterwards, right up until like the 20th century. It was known as the Riding of the Black Lad, where originally they would take an effigy of Sir Ralph and they would drag it through the streets, kicking it, punching it, abusing it, and recreating his death. Later it became a lot more civilised, it just became like a parade with people on horses and someone dressed as Sir Ralph and then they'd recreate his death in, in safe circumstances. But what was his death, I hear you ask? Well, for being a complete and total bastard, his tenants allegedly turned on him, and one of them shot him with an arrow. There's not many details I could find about the actual incident itself, but allegedly he was killed, murdered, assassinated by one of his tenants. Or, there is a rumour, maybe, maybe it wasn't a tenant after all. <laughs> you bastard, you bastard, you shot me. Who, who are you? I do believe you know me, Sir Ralph from the time you were Lieutenant of the Tower of London. And I have shot you in revenge for my brother, King Edward, for I am the Duke of York. History, it's a thing of the past. It's a thing of the past.